Hey, Nerd Herd, Dynasty Nerds here back again, giving you our top 12 pre-NFL draft rookies in order versus our consensus rank ranks. There's a lot of players here we like, a lot we don't like. Some players have my, Matt's going to be like, come here, too. Come here? What? I don't know what that means, but yeah. I'm I'm a little disappointed in myself because I thought I was the uh, the hype train conductor on a guy, and it's this guy. Yeah, come here. Oh, uh, you're, you're ah, trying to rhyme. Zamir. Where does Matt have Zamir White ranked? Find out right now. Ready, set, Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. Hey. Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Rich Dotson, here my fellow nerds, Matt O'Hara. Hey, hey. Garrett Price. How's it going? And Jared Wackerly. What up? We're all here. It's that week, guys. It's uh, NFL Draft Week. Ooh, I'm it's so a big excited. week. It might, it might be a weak NFL draft class, but sure. for Dynasty Leagues, this is this is all our our gloriness put into one. It's, all our gloriness. It's uh, all this hard work we talked about, these rookies and breaking them down. The and Dynasty Summer. Or the Summer of Dynasty? It's Dynasty it's Summer. Dynasty, dynasty Summer. Dynasty Summer. The yeah. spring, the s- Dynasty Spring is about to spring upon us into a Dynasty Summer of gloriness where mm. all the rookie drafts start. <laughs> like all my rookie drafts start on Monday. Uh, a lot of mine start this weekend too. As, as long as the whole league's paid, they start on Monday. Last mm. Nerd Standing Leagues are starting on Monday if they're paid up. So it's it's we're getting in there. Uh, this is the week. This is where this is the week where your team or your guy can go from a horse to all of a sudden he has a horn on his head and he's a unicorn. It's it could be glorious. Wow. wow. Yeah. You change species. That is yeah. crazy. Yeah. Mythical beast. Mythical species, nonetheless. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah. So here we are. Uh we're gonna talk today. We did all the work. We broke down the players. We crunched we numbers. Last week. Yep, we did. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Captain crunched those numbers. And we're gonna give you our overall rankings. The four of us put our top 30 players into a sheet. That's right. Then we used a very hard math- mathematical equation to uh, get an ADP That's right. between the four of these four of us. And we did it. We uh, somehow did it without bringing in Albert Einstein's great, great grandkid. And we did it. And we're going to give you our top 30 rookies in order. And then we're going to do a nerd herd show, which uh, it'll be a surprise. surprise. You got to be a nerd member. Yeah. So ready to get into it? Let's do it. But before we do, I got to tell you guys and gals, how you can get really hooked up by possibly getting your team audit on the team audit on our YouTube series where you send in your team. Mm. And then Jared and Gary and I, we break down your team and tell you how to uh, make it a championship contender. I might be there. You never know. You never know. You, Matt, never, might show even, up. you never even mentioned me. We, I mean, I haven't been we on one. We know you might. We haven't, I haven't theory. been on one yet. Yeah, but it yeah. is past April 15th. So there is a chance. Oh, I was going to say, I was saying, it is, pa- it is past his due date. Yeah, that's right. Matt There's does. Uh, He'll be on the Matt next likes to work one. some numbers sometimes. So what you say? The next one. You'll be on the next one. Sure. Which not? is likely next week. We'll plan it out. There we so go. possibly get your team audited and a hundred percent guaranteed to get a Dynasty Nerd T-shirt, the most comfortable T-shirt in the world, by going to our friends over at Prize Picks. And we're like, whoa, whoa, how do I get in and all this gloriness? It's simple. All you gotta do is go to Prize Picks, click on NFL futures bets, and make a ten dollar bet on any futures. I said I let the Joe Mixon over. 1150 yards. That's my over. I'll probably yeah. make a new one for next yeah. week. So I give some more action on there. I call those richest tips, just a tip. So, and you know, all you gotta do is make that bet. And it's a no, price picks is number one prop bet site out there today. It's the number one legal way to get in there and do it. And you use the promo code nerds. So you have to use the promo code nerds to qualify for the shirt for the uh, audit uh, entry. And they're going to match your deposit up to hundred bucks. You can get in there and you pick two to five players. They're over the under the projection and you went up 10 times of your entry fee. And this is where you go in. It's not just future bets, NFL. It's all the sports you can think of. They're in there and they're going to give you prop bets and you get in there. It's called prize picks. You check them out. You put in that promo code nerds, make an NFL futures bet. Uh, and then there's a Google sheet that's going to be on this podcast show. Right. Jared? Yeah. It's, it's a Google form. So I'll put the link in the show notes and as well in the YouTube description, in case you guys are watching on YouTube. If you do the prize picks um, entry, and you, then you'll want to click on the link and fill out the form. That'll enter you into the drawing to get your team audited on our Dynasty Team Audit Series. So we use the Dynasty GM tool. We look at your team. Is it a contender? Is it in a rebuild? We go through your entire league, see what trades you need to make in order to put yourself in a better position. Sorry. And we break your team down. It's pretty fun. Ooh, sweet giggity giggity. So there you go. Get on our prize picks promo code nerds. We're going to hook you up in more ways than two. Ooh, that's called a menage three. 
All right, let's get in these rookies, shall we? <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> so, no surprise here. There's four of us. There are four uh, of us. You can hear on the microphone. That is not surprising. If you're watching on well, YouTube, you can see three I, of us. I was going to say, that might be surprising if you're watching on YouTube because you can only see three. Well, we try to keep the ugly people in the shadows. We got to get a camera mounted on this wall pointed at I me. actually thought about that. Because we have a switcher for the camera views that we bought a long time ago. We and we just use don't use because we have angle. one camera angle. <laughs> Well, we have a GoPro that's behind you. We just right. put on the wall. We'll get it set up. We'll get it set up. We have one right behind you. You literally just got to plug it in. Yeah. I'll show, I'll it show looks you different. Off. Look, we're talking show uh, tech, net, technical advances on what, I mean, what word am I using? <laughs> I don't know. What the God, fuck. I'm so stupid. I can't help it. I was born this way. Um, <laughs> I'm playing my school systems. So here we are. Uh, the, between the four of us, there's a clear cut 1-1 one, one here yep. uh, amongst our rankings. There's almost a clear cut Almost. Number two. You were the defector. But I ruined it. So but we're, not gonna, we're not there yet. The number one player, consensus 1-1, one, one, Brees Hall, running back. Pretty Iowa State. What do you got in school? It just, felt, it just felt like you needed to complete that. I was, oh. I was waiting. I was waiting to talk. Running back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I probably should give their schools too. Nothing. Right? Nothing. He's First a running back. I'm, I'm trying to get hip to this podcast game. It's all new <laughs> to me now. I'm trying to learn how to do it. Learn as we go, right? Learn yeah. as we go. Yep. So Fake Brees Hall, I mean, it's, it's it's pretty much consensus here, right? In yeah. Every mm -hmm. rookie draft, and for the first time ever, we even said in Superflex, yeah, Brees Hall, the one one. Yeah. Wow, way to go here, guys! <laughs> you know, we'll learn as we I go. Mean, I don't, I don't like what. What is the great like takeaway from this? Because at this point, I think this is almost consensus, not just us, but right. it's it's across the board. General yeah. dynasty consensus. I think people are scared of the quarterbacks now. We'll see what happens if Malik Willis goes top five or, you know, Desmond Ritter goes to a sexy spot or Kenny Pickett, you know, goes to someplace with a great receiving core. You know, like there are things that could be temptations from right. that, but there's just still so much risk. I would be shocked if a quarterback gets past three in my super, super flex rankings. Well, I mean, I think there's a, I mean, I think, Yes, I, I, I don't disagree with what you just said. Right. Uh, but I think there's a, a path to have, like you said, like Garrett Wilson landing in, in Kansas City, a Garrett Wilson landing in Green Bay, where all of a sudden he's leapfrogging sure. and, and being the one one. And and you know, these are pre draft rankings and, and like you like you mentioned, it's it's one of those things Malik Willis, if he lands in, in a great spot for him to learn, he could he could potentially not in all drafts, but in a lot of drafts, he could end up jumping to that one one in Superflex easily. I I mean that's that's just that's the way Superflex works. I mean, the the, the quarterbacks are always going to be so mouth. Yeah. They're going to have. They're going to be mouth watering. They're going to be too hard to pass. But up let me ask you specifically: Is there a way where Brees Hall is not your one one? Do you think that's even possible? Probably not. Yeah, there's no way. No? All these other players mirror no. like frogs in 1955 biology classes. They're pinned down. They ain't going anywhere. <laughs> I mean, the, you could always Dead frogs I mean, walking. He, he could always be drafted into a some sort of committee. You know what I mean? With another good. I think bat. that would be the only way, and that would yeah. be the only way that that you're like kind of hesitant. You're yeah. such an idiot. How would he come up with this stuff? <laughs> so I, have no idea I mean, how, dude, how his mind works that he comes I mean, up with this. Dude, Brees Hall to me, how, dude, I like him more than people probably like Javante Williams going this year. I know, I know. Go ahead, look at me funny, cross eyed, giggle under your breaths. Laugh under your headphones. I don't care. I, I'm I'm going right back to our, my original breakdown of Brees Hall. Like, I think he's elite. I think he's one of the better running backs I've scouted over these last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I think I don't care where he goes because wherever he goes, he's going to be better than another guy there. So there's no competition that really scares me. I think worst case, you get a Javante Williams situation. And Javon, I mean, look where Javante is right now. Right. You know? He literally split carries 50-50 with Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon put up almost as good as numbers as he did. And all of a sudden, Javante Williams is the third running back off the board and startups. You know what I mean? So to yep. me, this is a player that this is a guy that I would happily like what looks like an overpay today is underpay tomorrow. Go get in this rookie draft. Like he's again, Garrett Wilson is safe, right? Like we get all, when mm -hmm. we talk about safe, I think, I think here's the difference is we talk about Garrett Wilson, like Garrett Wilson is he's the consensus safest player in this draft pretty much. And we mm -hmm. all like Brees Hall too, but I don't think Garrett, that's not fair to Garrett Wilson, but like I think Brees Hall ceiling so much higher. Like he's to me, I see elite of the league. Like we don't see Jamar chasing Garrett Wilson. You know, could he possibly get there? Of course. I mean, nobody thought Justin Jefferson was going to be the number one overall startup player 
at, at oh, one Oh, yeah. I mean, if that was the case, he would have been taken top five in the NFL draft, not in the 20s. I only if I had a pair of crystal balls laying around here. Um, so for me, this... <laughs> Whoa. I haven't heard that in a while. I mean, it has been a while. There's nobody leapfrog. It doesn't matter where Malik Willis goes. It doesn't. There's too many question marks about these quarterbacks for me not to... Not even for a home run. Your number two guy, which is the rest of our number three guy, Kenneth Walker, because there have been some rumblings. There's quite a few people that actually have leapfrogged Kenneth Walker just on talent alone over Brees Hall. If their landing spots, I've seen those people do have that. been skewed. No, no, it won't. It won't change but it for you. There is nothing that can happen. Brees Hall can walk in this door right now, kick me so hard in the nuts that I go solo in that section and. He's still my 1-1. One, one. There's nothing he could do. Well, you're just one then, too. Yeah. I know. Well, I'll be 1-1, one, one too. 1-1. One <laughs> one. Well, one of two. <laughs> Goodbye, old friends. Um, <laughs> no, so to me, like, there's nothing There's there's nothing that can happen on draft. All right. Nothing at all that not makes Brees Hall the 1-1. One, one. I think he has the potential to be in a first-round startup player next year in the right Absolutely. situation. Um, I think he's somebody that after this year, he'll fall in that category of that like Jonathan Taylor uh, situation where you could pretty much open the doors to make a trade for anybody, right? Sure. Like if you want Jamar Chase, you want Justin Jefferson, he's the guy that's going to open the door for that conversation. Where a lot of times that door is so thick, people can't even hear you knocking. You know what I mean? Like this, this is the kind of player that gets that done. Mm -hmm. And that's so out of a class that we talk about that's like, okay, I think we do have an elite talent here, and I think it's Brees Hall. So clearly the 1-1 one -one from all of us. Yep. I agree. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Let's move on to number two. Uh, this was a 2.25, not the consensus. Garrett Wilson, wide receiver out of Ohio State. Everybody here had Garrett Wilson at two. I had him at three. And for me, so I'll go first. Because Tell us why. I talked the most. Anyways. Right. and That's a good reason to go first. It's probably my best reason as I learn as this podcast thing as I go along. And, um, you know, some people say, hey, you should share the airtime. And I'm like, wow, that's a bad idea. <laughs> and to me... <laughs> <laughs> so they're really like so what terrible. I'm doing. What I'm doing here is just split hairs, right? Like I expect Garrett Wilson to go somewhere in the top 10. And what, like if Garrett Wilson goes to Atlanta and he's the prime wide receiver there, then I have no problem. Take Garrett Wilson at two. I don't care where Garrett Wilson actually goes. I have no problem taking any, him at two. no matter what, he could easily be the one, two here, but I like Kenneth Walker enough where running backs rule all in fantasy football. So if Kenneth Walker has a really good year this year, I can get Garrett Wilson if I want. Like, for sure. It doesn't matter how... I don't think Garrett Wilson put the kind of number... I don't think he's going to put up a Jamar Chase, Chase, Justin Jefferson kind of year. So I think he'll be attainable. I just think with this draft class, the way it looks, definitely here at like 1-2. I think at 2-2, two, two, I feel pretty comfortable getting a receiver that has at least some upside. You know, maybe mm -hmm. I could get like a, a, a Christian Watson, a Jahan Dotson, maybe George Pickens falls, a Sky Moore. Like... I want it once this once we get past these two running backs, like that's it. Like I don't love anybody, but I love Kenneth Walker. And I explained why on our podcast. I love his speed. I love the way he gets outside. I love his patience. I love that he can run in between the tackles. Um I, I like they had the combine you can show me and catch the football. So in a in a in a league where we've seen such an influx of young receivers and, and there's so many good receivers out there. If you go a startup, I mean you're in the tenth round, you're getting a receiver that you like. Sure. There's still we still haven't caught up there with running backs. Definitely with how many th timeshare running back situations we have. If Kenneth Walker can find himself in the right situation, be a three down back. Yep. Those are so hard to come by in dynasty when there's only like six or seven of those guys as, as there, not even seven, probably like six at the most of those guys as as there is. That weighs that's the 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 scale tipper for me. Um, if Gary Wilson goes to Atlanta, then maybe it depends on my team what I need. Sure. Uh, even now, I think. If I really needed a running back, I'm taking Kenneth Walker. If my team's in complete rebuild rep mode where I don't have a lot to work with, like I'm taking Garrett Wilson because I want the young receiver over the running back always. But depending on where my team is, I'm leaning Kenneth Walker in a vacuum. Makes sense. No, I, I, down that same, I guess, avenue or vein, what if, you, what if you're in a rebuild and it's a super flex and, and – Malik Malik goes somewhere good. Oh, I mean, are Malik you, Willis. Yeah. Okay. Oh, after Brees Hall, then the quarterbacks are knocking. Like this is this year. Malik Willis. Same. Same. It's a shock of the draft, right? Like Malik Willis goes two to Detroit. Okay. Uh, say Pittsburgh trades up for Kenny Pickett, right? Uh, okay. At like six, seven, or eight, somewhere around there. Pittsburgh trades up for Kenny Pickett. Then I'm going Brees Hall, Malik Willis, Kenny, Kenny Pickett. Yep. You know what I mean? Definitely with Malik Willis in a dome, like forget about it. You know, mm -hmm. with him running with him, DeAndre mm -hmm. Swift and TJ Hawkinson, like I would love that fit actually. They should, 
Don't you, you dare Willie forget Willis. about DJ Shark. <laughs> he is there now. He, oh, they did sign DJ Shark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, Malik Willis. Do, 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 do. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we're talking, obviously, these are one QB rankings, but those guys would easily, they get top 10 draft pedigree and that, that little bit of insulation. Like, I'm putting them one, two. Like, for, like, I don't think there's anything I could do about that. Like, I would take those guys. All right. All right. Let's uh let's move on to that's well, it. No Garrett Wilson talk for you guys. Is I mean, he locked in number two? Is it just well, we got a lot of guys to cover. He he's locked. I mean, he is locked in for me. I, uh, it's very easy. Garrett, <laughs> we got we got so many guys to talk about. Yeah, we did so, rank so many to debate. Like I because I feel like we're we're at the top. Like our top four is easy. They're all fairly consensus ish, right. and we all almost agree like we might have a spot or two but sure. like our first four are pretty easy once we get to in. five like everything goes nuts Bonkers. so so yeah. It, yeah that's safe to say we all had the same top four so our top yes. four Brees hall garrett wilson kenneth walker and jameson williams um and that's the order too so after kenneth after garrett wilson goes kenneth walker then goes jameson williams he went as high as number three with matt and jared and as high as number four with garrett and myself yep. so Man, I know you said before watching this tape, like you just, you love him. And it, of it's, course we all do for right. Ohio. So. No, obviously. I mean, he's the the highest upside player in this top four, in my opinion. I think this is a, he's a difference maker at the position. You know, it, it, it's the, he's a little bit raw. He needs to refine a few things and obviously he's coming off an ACL. Otherwise, I think he would be right in that conversation with the number two, number one spot. And because I think he's that much of a difference maker on the field. Yeah, I, I really like Jamison Williams. The fact that I have him at four makes it seem like I'm low on him compared to us. But community-wise, yeah. I mean, you'll, you'll see him at, I mean, some people even have him at one. Not many, but some people have him at one. But then there's others that have him down at five. You know, so I think as a as a whole, our podcast definitely likes what we've seen on tape for Jamison Williams. Think he can be good at the next level and think he's more than just a deep threat. He's everybody's yep. wide receiver too. Yep, everybody's. So there's not, like you said, there's not a lot to go over there. Um, coming at number five, Drake London comes in out of USC. Uh, he, he was as low as eight. Matt had him at eight, as high as five for Garrett and Jared there. So he'd be their next player off the board ahead of guys like Traylon Burks. Matt, why do you have Drake London down at eight? Was there is there something about him that you're just concerned with? Um, yeah, I mean, there are the lingering concerns that I have just over his, I guess, overall speed and explosiveness, his separation. I know that he that that's not really how he wins. He wins by being a a big kind of bully out on the on the field. I just don't know how if he's not Mike Evans, then what is he? I mean, is he JJ Arcego Whiteside? That's like what's in the back of my head mm-hmm. because I'm I'm not a hundred percent sold that he is Mike Evans. So I think he's got a little bit of I guess refining to do to his routes um, because I, I do feel like that was a, a he was a bit basic there, um, so he has a, a little ways to go there, and just uh, just uh, his overall separation kind of bothers me. It, it it bugs me a little bit. And then on the flip side, Garrett, why is he your third ranked receiver? See, it's not the. To me, I thought he did a, a great job separating. I didn't have any issues with that. I get what you're saying because he's not the the fastest player he's not uh, quick in and out of breaks he's not gonna he's not but gonna, he's great off the line he is yeah. and he runs very good routes for a guy of his size and he sinks his hips really well um and and you can see that basketball background in his game so yes i get what you're saying but at six four six five you you know there's they're only going to be able to do sure. so much at Absolutely. that size uh so i i'm not overly concerned i mean there are reasons i don't have him as my wide receiver one like we've seen Quite a few people. I think he might be maybe the consensus wide receiver too after Garrett Wilson. Uh, those are the two most common guys I see at the top of people's ranking. So, you know, I, I do think that there are enough holes in his game that I do worry. But when we're talking about how young he produced while being a two-sport athlete at a school where we've seen a, a track record of success lately, they're doing a great job with Michael Pittman Jr. They did a great job with Amon Ross St. Brown. He's the next in line, but he was producing even while they were there um, as a freshman and as a sophomore. So uh, I loved seeing that out of him. So I, I think he's a really good player. And I think whoever takes him, I, I would be shocked to see him go past 15, 17. I mean, I think that's the lowest I could really see him going uh, in this class. And I'm fascinated just to see how many 
wide receivers go in the first round period. I mean, Very I've impressive. heard as many as seven. Yeah. Like wild. Which would tie the record. Well, I mean, yeah. I think that's a, it's partially a product of that being a strength of this draft, but also the crazy amount of money that people are paying wide receivers right now. Right. People would much rather just dip into just draft this a guy. draft pool and because people have been coming out and producing right away. Minus you well. get these guys five years instead yep. of four. Exactly. If you're taking and, them the second and it's round. why it's going to be why Debo going to have a such a hard time getting traded because they're going to want so much. And then on top of that, teams have to pay him $25 million money. a year. Like yep. it's good luck. Yep. Trying to get all that draft capital, you know what I mean? Just people, when people say this stuff, like, oh, I can't believe he got traded for this. Well, yeah, because they got to pay him $25 million. You have to think there's going to be a correction, right? I mean, there's got to be some sort. I mean, it was it was really this Christian Kirk it contract it went that jacked that. everything up. Well, the Jaguars did that. The Browns gave Deshaun Watson, you know. But people got to realize, like, the cap's going to keep going up. It like, is. It the is. cap went up almost $30 million this year. Guess what? It's going up another $30 million next year. And the year after that, it's probably going to go even more because all that all that gambling money comes in, all that new TV money comes in. Like this, the, the, the cap is going to skyrocket. So where it seems like paying a receiver $20 million seems like a lot, it won't be a lot here coming very soon. Like these guys are going to get more money. And now this huge, as every other state starts to more legalize gambling, more legalized gambling. Sure. Listen, all that gambling money, half of that money goes to the NFL players. So all revenue half of that goes to the players like they have to give half the money to the players so with all with apple coming in and new streaming services and right. you know it's elon all, musk buying twitter so who knows what they'll do you know what i mean like, <laughs> who knows like it's all revenue yeah so the fact that we're going to jump from you know 60 million dollars in a sure. 48 month span i mean that covers your quarterback your number one receiver and your defensive end right there you know what I mean? Right. So these big deals where people are, like even that Amari Cooper, people are praising that Browns deal now oh, yeah. for getting Amari Cooper for three years for $20 million because like, oh, that's a lot. Nobody's going to pay that $20 million. Well, guess what? Here we are two months later, and people are like, oh, I'd be happy to pay my receiver $20 million. That's great. One what guy. a bargain. So to me, it's, it's a situation, going back to the original thing here with the receivers, yeah, I think it's just, it's going to, we're going to see a lot more receivers that have talent that can produce NFL team go because you get that fifth-year option at five years of a young guy. Maybe to be worth paying him down the road, but if not, guess what? Kind of treat him like running backs. Go draft another guy. Yep. Get him out of here at twenty six. Oh, that's dumb. That's a dumb idea. No, no. But you what you, what you, I was case. gonna say what you do is you, you get the five years and then you franchise, franchise, and out the door. Yeah. And then by then they're and, and twenty eight. Five, six, seven years is a lifetime in the NFL. It really is. It's a lifetime in general. Oh, for so, a seven year old. Oh, so much younger. <laughs> seven years ago. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, next ranked player here at number seven. Is at number six. At number six is Jahan Dotson, wide receiver out of Penn Woo! State. Uh, ranked as high as number six for Matt and as low as number 10 for Jared. So let's start there. Jared, you put Jahan Dotson at 10. Mm-hmm. Any specific reason there, or just is this where the other guys kind of filled How in? How dare you? <laughs> no. Oh, Matt, no. you got a couple of high dare you's coming up here in about five <laughs> picks or so. Yeah, I mean, from like the wide receiver ranks, like that's kind of how he stacks up for me. I, I I see him more as like a back end of the first round and, and rookie drafts for me personally. Obviously, putting him at at ten. Um, his physicality, his overall physicality profile, is a little bit of a question mark for me and how that's going to translate to the NFL. I don't see him as an overly physical player. I know when guys pressed him at the line of scrimmage, I thought he struggled a little bit getting open there um, versus man to man. So I'd rather take guys like Traylon Burks who has that has that size for the next level, has that um, athleticism that could translate to being like a wide receiver one. Um, or, you know, Chris Olave, I think he's a little bit more well-rounded as far as route running and um, his overall speed and things like that. And then there's a couple running backs like Isaiah Spiller that I would take. Um, I have Zamir White up there. So, um, no, sorry, I got Zamir White at 12. Sorry, this sheet's like sorted wrong. But um uh, you would blame, blame it on, on me. Sheet. Blame it on the sheet. Nah, it's hard to that. read when it's not like sorted by mine. So, um, oh sheet, Garrett, <laughs> what's going on over I here? I told someone to make. I the got sheet. Sky Moore over him. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. I mean, that's, to, that's, that's, that's to defend you a little bit, though. You are either at or you might even be a hair above consensus because I think for the most part we're looking at back end of the first round. That's where he's going to go. In in most drafts. So we're talking 10, 11, 12 in a lot of drafts. So I just think as a podcast, we ended up being higher on Jahan Dotson. I, than I'll tell you this. I, I would predict 
that this is where he ends up pretty close to because he's fall he's gonna go drafted right in that sweet spot of good team the Green Bay can like he's gonna land in a better situation than Drake London for the most part because again it could what, it will happen. when a player goes to the Jets it's not like oh yeah top ten pedigree but now he's sharing they signed Corey Davis they got Elijah Moore they got Zach Wilson you know what I mean it's like oh it's not as good as later so that's that's gonna be the biggest fight in this year's rookie draft where there's going to be so many players going in the first round, these these wide receivers that we're talking about, where some of these guys are going to go late to really good spots. And we again, I've said it multiple times. There's going to be a Green Bay and there's going to be a Kansas City bump. It doesn't matter how it goes, it's going to be a bump. And I think Johan Dotson's going to fall into He's that in camp. that range. Christian Watson's in that range. George Pickens could possibly be in that range, even though there's a lot of news coming out later. That he's um, fallen. Well, yeah, I mean, when we did his rookie breakdown, I talked about all the stuff that he had off the field, getting suspended for a year. He has a lot of off this field issues. Yeah. Even more things are coming up with the NFL GM saying, like, this dude's got, like, yeah, I was reading red some, flags galore. I, I read some, I think, uh, oh, what's his name? Bruce Feldman, I think his name is. Uh, he puts out an annual article yeah. with, like, anonymous GMs and scouts. Yeah, so he, the, the, the pieces on Pickens, like, there were several scouts. They're just like, we're not touching that. him. I saw that. Not Four different him. scouts. Like, we won't even touch him. Yeah. Teams like high evaluated teams right. like we only takes them. one. That's, That's all true. it takes is one. Only That's what happened for Tim one. Tebow. Yep, he yep. went in the first round. I hope that one's at forty four for Cleveland. Personally, that's just me. <laughs> so I think Jahan Dotson six. I think there's a very high chance that he sees one of those bumps. Like one of those, it's going to be Sky Moore, Jahan Dotson, Christian Watson, and George Perkins. So one of those guys is going to get a bump. Perkins, Pickens, mm. Pickens. Well, I like Perkins too. I like breakfast. I like breakfast food. Um, <laughs> breakfast but like, good. Man. They're gonna. They're, yeah. they're one of those four guys is gonna see this top six pick bump when they land on that team. It's just. It's just gonna happen. Definitely, if you are sitting there with Pat Mahomes on your roster, like, oh, I could. I could double up down here. Like this would be a good combination, good stack for me. Yeah, I could see that easily. So number seven comes in. At, uh, we have Isaiah Spiller. He went as high as number six to Garrett, and as low as number eleven to Matt. Uh, Garrett, what do you what do you like about Isaiah Spiller here, where he was your six overall player? Obviously, in our consensus, he's number seven. So you got him right around here, anyways. Mm-hmm. What do you like about him? Yeah, I think the narrative has just shifted too far, too fast on Isaiah Spiller. Uh, he's he's my RB three, so I'm not you know touting him over the other guys, but I think it's gone from man, he might, be, he might be the running back one in this class too. Oh, him and Brees, it's pretty close to, oh, it's definitely Brees too. He, he might not even be a top five running back in this class. And, and, if, and if that's how you feel, that's fine. But it's just fascinating to me to see how quickly the narrative has spun when in fact this was a good player that played in the SEC, that produced as a freshman. Like There are a lot of positive traits about Isaiah Spiller. He has the ideal size that you would want out of a running back. And yes, the testing stuff wasn't ideal. What was, I can't, I couldn't remember what his, what his test, what he ended up testing. Was it like he a didn't. four? That was the problem. He okay. didn't end up testing because he pulled a hamstring or something yeah, that's right, what, right before. Uh-huh. And that's then, right. Um, but he did, I, I do believe he, he did something at his pro day. I thought the pro day was pro like day is four, six, it, four, six, it depends three. on who yes. you ask. Yeah. It yeah. was all over the board between a four, five, three and a four, six, three. So yeah, it was all over the place. Um, but all of that being said, you know, that's the exact same time that Josh Jacobs ran uh, was a four four six three. So I'm not overly concerned about about that. Do I think he's an elite player? No. But do I think he could be a very solid running back two in a class where after Brees and Kenneth Walker, like there's a lot of question marks. I think he has a lot of pluses on his side that if I'm able to get him at 6-7 in my 1QB rookie drafts, which I have like none of, but if I was in a 1QB rookie draft, I would be very happy to get him in that range. Yeah, I have him at 9, and he's for sure, like I could almost guarantee that he won't finish at 9. Like he'll get a bump for me too. I just He's one of those players where like, I like him, he's fine, I'm with you, he's solid. In the right situation, he could be a great fantasy football mm-hmm. running back, and but I could easily fall into a situation where I have him at 9. So like, I mean, he's, he's, to be fair, most of these guys are going to move to the NFL draft because sure. the tiers are so close. But for Isaiah Spiller, particularly, if he lands up, if he ends up in Buffalo, or maybe somehow sure. he ends up in Houston, or he ends up in Atlanta, right? Like, he could get a nice big bump which up there to five or six. Which I believe six. Buffalo and Houston have both, uh, he's visited with both those teams. Uh, I think he's done Washington as well. 
Um, I was Washington's going brought in the most running backs. They have, and they brought in all three of the big ones. And they brought back J.D. McKissick, and they have uh, Gluteus Minimus. Yeah. That's so not very weird. Yeah. yeah. For Antonio Gibson lovers, and, uh, he already took a hit with McKissick with those uh, PPR points coming back down. That so. is uh, Gluteus Minimus. Minimus is Jarrett Patterson, for those that you don't know. That's, that's <laughs> fair. We're probably familiar sure. with our uh, inside jokes. Yeah. Yep. Well, get hip to the program, sons <laughs> and gals. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be – he's he's going to be a shit. I mean, he's going to end up getting drafted higher because he's going to get drafted probably. He, if he doesn't get second-round uh, draft It'll pedigree, third, it's going to be early third. early third for sure. And, and that's what I – from what I'm reading, the NFL seems to like him more than – others do um there are, i'm trying to remember i wish i could give credit where it was due but it was another one of those like anonymous source kind of things and uh three players that were identified to be going higher than a lot of people are mocking and one of those was, was, was spiller? A spiller i still want to see him in a situation where like he goes three two to detroit and he's like it's going to be him and deandre swift you right. know what i mean like That'd i don't want to i don't want to see that kind of situation for right. him but i think i think overall when this draft is all said and done Isaiah Spillers, we have him at seven, probably right around there. But I could easily see him jump. We have uh, jump in Jahan Dotson and definitely being our, possible and being the six overall player off the board. Because again, that running back thirst. There's a lot of dry oh, mouths yes. out there right now, and they need to they need to be uh, quenched. And Isaiah Spiller could spill over that quench. Correct. Because he's a spiller. <laughs> right. I'm a spiller too. I need a I need a button on here. It goes don't. <laughs> when, when, when Rich bombs one, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> can't yeah. win them all. They had a lot of does on that show then. Um, so next on the list here is Trey Burks at eight. So this is kind of a surprise. Uh, it doesn't help that you know my I am as high as five. Jared, you had him as high as six. Uh huh. Garrett had him as low as ten, and then Matt had him all the way down to fourteen. Matt has Trey Burks. As a second round pick, this guy's supposed to be a QB whispering, talking to the more wide receiver, whispering. wide receiver whispering. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm just so upset upset right now that I have to let it all out. Tell me why you have Traylon Burks at 14. Besides that, you didn't like that he had a little chubby cheeks coming into the NFL uh, <laughs> combine. I don't like him as much as everyone else. I mean, it, it, I just. He doesn't run great routes. 14 he's, in a week class. He's a, he is a build-up speed guy. I just don't – what is there that I can hang my hat on as somebody that likes wide receivers that run per, like crisp routes, that get open, get separated? Like, he, like he's got – he makes good catches. He does some good things, but he has a lot of refining to do in, in, to like become an NFL superstar. He's LaVisca Chenault. Did you ever end up watching? He Alabama could be a LaVisca game? Chenault. He absolutely could be. That's one of his potential outcomes. And I'm not pushing a guy up just because everyone else likes him when I don't like his tape. Did you watch the Alabama game? Did I watch the Alabama game? Yeah, because last time we talked, you said he hadn't watched it yet. Which still kind of blows remember. me mind that you can actually give an actual like take on Traylon Burks without watching the Alabama game. Without watching that the was Alabama game. game. All right. Against a good well, first I'll just turn it on right now. We'll, we'll watch you it now. <laughs> I'll watch it now. Watch, watch it. You're going to see this like 13, 12, 11. Yeah. Ooh, look at that route. Oh, look at that. He'll probably play. end up going the other way. No, Ooh, I mean, if I watch it, more of him. Got him. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this. If you, by wa- here's what you'll get by watching Alabama game is you're going to see his max potential of what he could do versus a very good defense and NFL caliber players. I sure. mean, he, it was his best game of his career, probably, right? That I Alabama would, game. I would so, say so, again, and you're cherry picking people's best games. Everybody's going to look like an all pro at that point. Um, Did he run any good crisp routes? He runs. Okay. In, Matt, Matt I'm closer to you than them, so I can't really like anywhere, say anything. Did he, did he run a route anywhere? Crisp routes. I wouldn't say crisp no. routes, but okay. I mean. No, I mean, he makes plays. I mean, he, he's a playmaker. throw the ball down to him, down the field, which he, he beats defenders consistently down the field on. I know he's a build-up guy, but he still has that speed. I mean, the GPS tracking on the field doesn't lie. He was the I mean, fastest he, player, he ran 40. the fastest in, the, in college football. Right, year. but he is fast, like when he plays football, which is which is key. Um, he... he for a big guy, I mean, he isn't overly physical, which, in my opinion, he needs to get better at. Mm-hmm. Uh, he does need to improve his route running, but I think he's just, from a potential standpoint, um, he just offers so much more than a lot of these guys in this class. I would agree um, with that. I would agree that he does offer more potential, but in the top five or six of my draft, I can't draft on potential. Well, you're I a, can't. You're miss. a Garrett scorned by J.J. Arcega Whiteside, so that's I am that's scorned fine. by that. I, he could be Doriel Green Beckham too for me. Like and I've been burnt by that. And dude. you're Matthew scorned by Doriel Green Beckham. Yeah, me, absolutely. I'm not scorned by anybody. 
I think when I we get on. in this part of the draft, there's a question marks with a lot of these guys. Still. There are. There are. Absolutely. That, th- that's the question marks went class. back two players again. That's where, I feel, players that's where I feel comfortable taking that kind of risk. Like second round, somewhere like that. Like uh, I feel great getting him there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take him middle of the first round. I'm just not. So I'm not going to get him anywhere. I know that already going into the process. I probably won't at 10. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause and, it'd be and long I'm, gone. And I'm fine probably with not. that. I, they're just not they're He's not my flavor. You know what I mean? He, he's not the kind of guy that I covet. He's not the kind of guy I want on my roster. Is he going to have huge games sometimes in the NFL? I guarantee he will. Yes. But there's going to be other times when guys are just getting able to shut him down because they're, he's just not, he's not running Chris Brown. He's not getting the good kind of separation. If he lends up in a system where he's with a quarterback, that's a little bit timid and not, not willing to just chuck it up to him. How is he going to win? How is he going to get the ball to score fantasy points? I just, I just don't know. So I'm, I'm the complete opposite spectrum. Like I, when I watch this tape, I see a playmaker. I see somebody, you put the ball, you get the ball in his hands and he just makes things happen. He's got a good enough speed. He's got good enough contact balance. Um, I'll, he, he, I'll hop. I'll happily let you take him in drafts, and I'll and I'll pick somebody else. Well, happily hop on top of that. Pick. Exactly. <laughs> so you could just go there and be Traylon Jerks. I don't even care. I think he's a fantastic football player. It just it, to me, it comes down to like there's no, athletic scoring, good. and then there is you know game tape. And when you watch a game tape on Traylon Burks, you see a playmaker, right? And yeah, a lot of his stuff. You were talking about his route running. Like a lot of his play design was short, intermediate stuff just to get the ball in his hands. Because we we mentioned before that Arkansas quarterback just wasn't that great. So it terrible. yeah, it's it's going to be intriguing. Um, I have my number five overall player, and that's right where I'll take him. It, it's like him and Drake London are like neck and neck for mm-hmm. me. Um, and he's going to go in the first round. He's going to get good draft pedigree, I think. I mean, just because overall this whole draft is kind of weak and stinks. And we talked about how all these wide receivers are getting pushed up. So I expect him to go somewhere good. I'm still not going to move him up anymore. So if he went to Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers, you're not moving him up still. All right. He's going to get a Green Bay pump bump <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Would, would he sneak into the first round or, then for you then? Yeah. Like 11, or even, yeah. even more yeah. so, even Absolutely. Kansas City. Kansas City loves those short uh, bubble screens. He the wasn't receiver in the good flat. at that, though. Like, that wasn't like a – I don't think that was like a doing him a favor. Who? Traylon Burks hitting him with little bubble screens. Oh. I don't think he wins like that. That's I not think the, he does better over the middle. Yeah, absolutely. Like get the guy moving a little bit. He's a build up speed guy. You give him to him right at the line of scrimmage while he's standing still. He's just he's definitely not going to win in the NFL like that. Going on the number nine, our ninth overall player. Now, what's funny about our ninth overall player, Chris Alive, out of wide receiver out of Ohio State, is I was asked multiple times on guest shows like, "What's the one player you probably won't draft? You'll have wrinkle over <laughs> than everybody else." I was like, oh, "It's probably Chris Alave." I had Chris Olave ranked as my number seventh overall player. Matt had him at 13. <laughs> Gary had him at eight. He's hanging out with Trey Long. And Burks, Jared man. had him at nine. <laughs> I had him ranked higher than everybody. Yep. <laughs> Who's the one player you'll probably be lower on most? Oh, Chris Olave for sure. You didn't even have the low, lowest in the podcast. I think I think we're lowest as a group uh, compared to consensus, though. You think so? Yeah, I mean... No, Matt is a 13 for well, sure. Well, Matt definitely is. Yeah. yeah. He went from the wide receiver guru to wide receiver hater. Uh, maybe we're right in the sweet spot, Garrett. I think I think yeah seven to nine I think that's probably right around where he's going to go. That's right. I feel comfortable with him. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens once the NFL draft rolls around. Because if he ends up shocking the world and going top ten, I don't well, care. That doesn't do anything for me. If he goes top ten. That doesn't, that doesn't change anything for me whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. Or if he goes to Kansas City or Green Bay, yeah, then that dude, definitely changes things. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, John Ross went top ten. I still had him really low. Yeah. Uh, Darius Hayward Bay went top ten. Sure. Had him really low. That that stuff like that, that that see here's the difference the receivers like that they don't they're not quarterbacks like I'm still gonna go ahead and watch my tape and stick with that you know I mean like right some of these NFL teams are just damn crazy so that's and true. definitely receivers I mean we've seen year in year out these receivers go much higher and you're like what are these guys doing and then you see guys like Trey Qua- like Laquan Treadwell slipping you're like what are these doing but they were right he uh, like, <laughs> like I don't or were they like yeah, I had a great year this year, year. That's right. this year back in Jacksonville. <laughs> So obviously I was the lowest on, on Chris Olave. I'm not, he's just a guy that I think is good. I don't think he's going to be great. He doesn't offer anything after the catch. And I just don't know how he's going to be. He, I don't know how he's going to produce like ever, ever wide receiver one fantasy numbers. And, and I think more likely than not, he's going to be low end wide receiver two with his catch and fall down type of thing. 146 he, catches for 980 yards. He's got to fall in. Like, when we did the rookie breakdowns, I, I said the exact same thing. If he lands in a like high volume situation, that's really the only way he's going to be relevant in my eyes. Cause it's going to be very hit or miss otherwise. Cause then he's going to be, you're going to be working on just those deep ball type of things. For him. I, I, 
I it, it's for interesting. Fantasy relevance. It's interesting because we have them ranked five spots apart. But I don't necessarily disagree with what you're saying. I think it's just our expectations are different. I don't expect Chris Olave to be a wide receiver one for fantasy football purposes. I fully expect him to be a mid to low wide receiver two that does it mostly on getting open and catching the football. Uh, and I'm okay with that. Like it, This is more of a, I don't want to miss in the first round. I think he will hit to an extent. I don't think he's. I don't think he will ever be top twelve. I don't even know that he'll get that close to top twelve. He, he, had, he, he had to be in the same situation it was last year that Hunter Renfro was in, right? Where like sure. they don't have any other number one receiver, but uh, he's a Darren better athlete down. than Hunter. Renfro. Yeah, no, he. Is, but you know, but yeah. Hunter Renfro finishes wide receiver nine. Right. You know I mean, um, when you look at, I also it, think Hunter Renfro is tougher than him. So there's that. Well, that's sure. for sure. Um, that, that I mean, these guys like the, Cole the Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders, awesome. uh, these elite route runners that come in that they're, they're you know. Uh, thin, you know, lean, I guess is the correct word to say it. Lean, so lean, lean with it, right? I, I won't say he has zero chance to be a wide receiver one because it'd be that fluky year where he sure, a lot absolutely. of balls for sure. But I think for the most part, I think we're all in consensus. Like he's a mid range wide receiver too. In yeah. nice football. And that's, a, again, that's a great thing to have mm-hmm. a mid range. wide receiver, And that's two. a ceiling. That's a ceiling too. I yes. mean, and that's why I have him at 13 because I just, you just want more upside. I want a little bit more upside. When we go, that's fine. When we, I, I just don't want to miss. And I, I think that's understand. the difference yep. in those rankings. And like I said, when we go back to the what I said earlier in the, the pod where we've had such an influx of young receivers, like mm-hmm. this receiver in class. So the question you have to ask yourself for these rookies when you go into here too, and and I get it. It's it's the biggest infatuation when you're playing dynasty fantasy football is like, I'm drafting the next Justin Jefferson. I'm drafting the next Jonathan Taylor. I'm drafting the next Josh Allen. I'm getting the next George Kittle, right? Or, you know, I'm getting that guy. And this is the easiest way to come about that. And it can be had and it can be had, right? You know, like Rob Gronkowski going into the second or third round of your rookie draft. Uh running backs like, you know, Arian Foster going in the sixth sure. round of your rookie draft. Josh Allen going in the second round in a one QB league, third round, fourth round of your rookie draft. It's possible. But right now this huge influx of talent at wide receiver in young talent nonetheless. And Receivers we already have ahead of him, guys like not Matt, but like Traylon Burks, Drake London, Jamison Williams, Garrett Wilson, Jahan Dotson, uh, other guys that have a high ceiling behind him like Sky Moore, George Pickens, Christian Watson. You had to ask yourself, where does Chris Alave fall into the mold of not just his rookie class, but the yes of the the rest of these young receivers in the NFL today? So for to say, oh, his ceiling's a mid range wide receiver too, which would put him at right around anywhere from wide receiver sixteen to nineteen. If you sit back, honestly, look at the receiving receivers in NFL today mm-hmm. and uh, dynasty wide receivers, you're going to find easily 16 to 18 more guys that you would take ahead of Chris Olave right now. Um, and there's guys that are even older that for the next couple of years, a guy like Allen Robinson, that's a high chance to finish in that range as well, that you'd have more ranked in wide receiver 30 category overall compared to wide receiver 16, even though I'll give you wide receiver 16 numbers because of the age and production. So, so are you making my case for me? No, I ain't. No, what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, that's his ceiling's not as high as like something like, like a player, like George Pickens, a player like Christian Watson offers more upside. So when, Tons more. Yeah. I think with Chris Olave, what you have to realize is what you're getting is like, you're getting a mid range, to low end wide receiver two is a ceiling. And some years you have a wide receiver three. So if you're comfortable with that at pick seven, Pick eight when you're already a middle of the road team. Like, what do you like? Pickens offers wide receiver one upside. Yes. Very few guys. And you might miss. Obviously, he is the character concerns are are what really is derailing him in a lot of people's eyes, I think, at this point. Because if you just watch the tape, he's he's he George Pickens is got wide receiver one potential. And I'm sure. not going to speak back then this either. Cause a lot of it, maybe a lot of it comes in, he turns it around and all of a sudden he is and a he does, catch kind of guy. And he does he have, have the this, speed. he, I was gonna say he does have the speed for yeah. it. He can, and he away. will make big plays because of his speed. Definitely. Yes. He can run away he from just people, won't break many tackles. He can run away from people in the open field. He's never going to make anyone miss. He's never even going to try. If the defense is behind him between him and the goal line, there's, he, He's not going to get there. You know what I mean? Like, right. unless he can outrun him to an angle. Um, so, yeah, that's. So, and that's my point is like. It limits his upside. I, is, I, is this the player that you want to take at this spot? Because this which is. Which side like, of this are you on? Are you wanting to take him or no? No, I'm not. Because what I'm saying is 
So a pick seven. So pick you have eight. him the highest, and you're telling us you don't want to take him here. Listen, I'm just ranking these guys off the tape of where I pretty much have. And right. in, in hindsight, you know, probably I should have George Pickens, Sky Moore, and probably Christian Watson, probably on the upside high. You know, but there's but these guys have just as much so, red so, flags as Alave. Alave's only red flag is his run after the catch. Like, but he's safe. Like these other guys, red flags. Profile. Yeah, his physicality profile. These other guys, red flags are like red flags of oh, I might not get any fantasy football points. You know what I mean? Like so, in this draft right. class it's a seven. But my point is that this week class is going, if this is your team, pick seven, pick eight, and you've picked here multiple times of the year, I don't think this is the best pick for you is what I'm trying to say. Like, gotcha. I would rather, I would rather, because you guys are all in the same tier, I'm looking elsewhere in this range because I need more ceiling, right? I don't need another wide receiver two, uh, mid-range wide receiver two to low end wide receiver two because my team is full of wide receiver twos. It's why I'm stuck in the middle. You know, and this is kind of player that can up getting you kind of habitually stuck in the middle, right? It's it's a weird place to pick sometimes between six and nine. You right. get a deep classic we've had these last couple uh, years, and yeah, you've probably hit some home runs Absolutely. potentially. Yep. This year's class has looked down as a little bit of weaker. So if you've been in space consistently, one, you should definitely try and trade out for sure, trade back because. And he, get Chris Alave at where we have him at nine, and getting Christian Watson at fourteen. Give me a 23 second and I'll move back. You know what I mean? Sure. I just don't know if this is the right pick where we have them. I'm, I'm okay. There are consensus rankings. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm probably more so like my original take of like, if I was actually drafted in a draft after, I think after the NFL draft comes ago, he's going to move down just a little bit of my rankings. And it won't be because he's not a very talented football player. Mm -hmm. It's just because, there's way more downside on that dynasty fantasy football upside. I think a lot of these players that we're talking about today, they're excellent football players. I have no nothing against Traylon Burks as a, the football player. I just mm -hmm. am trying to figure out how these guys are going to win me, me championships. Yeah, and it, you know, I have a hard time reconciling some. Of them. And that's why I mean yeah. that's why we have to sit here and talk it out. It's the whole reason yeah. we do this podcast in the first place, and mm -hmm. it's why it's a dynasty fantasy football podcast. We're trying to find ways for our teams to win. Where's that ceiling? Where's that limit? So we're not sitting there ranking these players. You know, so when Matt has them at 14, it's because he doesn't think he's a good football player. It's like, how does he help me win a dynasty fantasy football championship? So if Matt looks at him as a roller coaster player, yeah. that will fooler kind of player, then he's going to move him down because that's not a helping him win. That's and that's, and this is why we wash the tape and try and find his path mm -hmm. to find the players that best fit your dynasty team to help you win. I want guys that are going to be consistently winning week in and week out, week, week in, week out. You put them in your lineup and you don't even have to think about it. Like right. the only reason you're taking them out is injury or bye week. That's it. Those are the guys I'm looking for. And that's what I'm looking for. That's the criteria when I'm doing wide receivers. That's what I'm looking at. So I want guys that can consistently win and that are QB friendly, that the quarterbacks are going to want to throw the ball to all the time. And you know, for one reason or the other, Traylon Burks, maybe he doesn't separate as much. Maybe he's not like a, a great route runner. Um, and Chris Olave, it's just going to be one of these things. He could get, if he's not in, if he's not in a high volume type of offense, he could, he could be on that roller coaster. So well, one of the things that I highly recommend is having your own ranks uh, before the NFL draft. Cause one place that's absolutely going to help you is on prediction mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Because when you go there, the NFL draft is going to change the values of these guys. Now, there's not actual values for these players on here yet, but first round guys, they're going to be a little more expensive than the second, third round guys. But if you have the same type of ranking on a third round guy, as someone got in the first round, buy up a bunch of shares of those players. And we'll, we'll talk about some of those guys uh, as we go. But predictionstrike.com, promo code Donis, you get a free share of a player with your first deposit of $20 or more. We're talking buying, we're talking selling, just like you would the stock market. Great website, great app, great partner. We've been partners with them for a long time. Remember to use that promo code DYNASTY to get your free share of a player with your first deposit of $20 or more at predictionstrike.com. All right, so that 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 was number nine, mm -hmm. Chris Olave. So give you a recap here. One, Brees Hall. Two, Garrett Wilson. Three, Kenneth Walker. Four, Jamison Williams. Five, Drake London. Six, Jahan Dotson. Seven, Isaiah Spiller. Eight, Traylon Burks. Nine, Chris Olave. And to finish out the top 10, we have Sky Moore out of Western Michigan, wide receiver. Now, I have him at 12. Matt has him at 12. Garrett at nine. And then Jared, you have him as high as number seven. What do you love about Sky Moore uh, that gets him into your, right in the middle of the first round of your draft for you? Because 
going back, he's the biggest player I've been kind of questioning mm-hmm. my overall rank with because it's like the more you watch him, you're like, God, he, he he seems like a lot of it. Like he seems pretty safe with a little bit higher of a ceiling. He's pretty electric. It's just he's from the small school. He's from right? the small school. I know. Mm-hmm. And since we did our breakdowns, I went back and watched even more of him and kind of like really solidified even my Sky feeling and <laughs> yeah, and my grade on him and. I'm like, I feel like I'm putting my neck out there a little bit with Sky Moore because he's in my top, he's like my fifth ranked receiver in this class, um, but he's from the MAC. So he came in as a DB and he switched over to wide receiver. And since then, I mean, he's, he dominated. He dominated the MAC. And um, all the reports that you read on this kid, like he's an extremely hard worker, great character, always in the film room. So I love hearing those types of things. Um, and I mean, just his play on the field, he's fantastic after the catch. Yep. He's twitchy, possibly one of the best route runners. He, I have him graded as the best, um, guy as far as release packages go. Um, I think you can get him the ball down the field. He can make plays at the catch point, even though he's five ten. Uh, he just finds ways to come up with the ball, kind of like Antonio Brown always did. He, he was he was kind of undersized, but he just always found a way to catch the football. Uh, that's what I see with Sky Moore. Uh, so I feel like ranking him here, and my feeling on going into rookie drafts is I want to come away with getting Sky Moore somehow, and that, whether that's trading back up into the late, at, you know, back of the first round. We'll see how the draft plays out, but. Sure. Uh, Sky Moore is a guy that I really, I really want to get. So he's the guy that you have circled like best bang. So you, you could argue that Sky Moore is probably, in your opinion, the best bang for your buck in this draft, right? Like, because mm-hmm. yes. once you get those top six guys, which we all agree are consensus, I think that's almost everywhere in Dynasty fans football. That's what we're looking for, like, because it's easy. You, you're right. At the top of the draft, it's easy. Mm-hmm. It's you're taking a combination of those players. What do you do outside that top six, or more so that top seven, top eight, right? Like. Where are those guys? How do you manipulate the draft to get your guys? And if Sky Moore is your, I think this is one draft. If Sky Moore is Jared's number seventh overall player, and after Drake London goes, then I have no problem taking Sky Moore over Olave, Traylon Burks. You know, actually, I wouldn't take him over Traylon Burks, but Isaiah Spiller, Jahan Dotson. Like, if that's your guy, get your guy. Mm-hmm. Get your guy. I mean, he's he he does everything that. Jared said, I said, my biggest thing here is like same thing to Christian Watson, but Christian Watson's not as savvy as an actual receiver as Sky Moore. He offers that straight line, big time, big size. And here's the other receiver. thing that is really selling me on, on Sky Moore. Christian Watson is an old prospect. 23 and a half. Sky Moore did this as a junior. He's coming out as a junior. There have only been three guys in the past like 20 years to do that. And I'm blanking on who the other one is from a small school to non-power five school to do that. There's only been three of them. It was Devontae Adams, and I'm blanking on who the other one is, and then Sky Moore. But whoever whoever the other one was, it was another guy that hit as well. So I feel I feel pretty good about Sky Moore uh, at the next level. That definitely gets the first – well, it'll say a lot if he gets that first-round draft pick. Oh, for sure. And and for the record, he is above Chris Olave and Traylon Burks for me. I just I, – I do see higher upside for him. So it's, it's one of those things that um, – I mean, right ab- he's right ahead of them for, right. for in, in my ranks, but it, it is an upside thing. And I, and I do like the way that he wins. And, and so that's – I do see the way that he wins translating. I know it's small school to, um, you know, to, to the NFL. It, it's a hard transition for some people. But I, I think the route running and his ability to make people miss in the open field is kind of what separates him. And, and, and I think that's how he's going to win in the NFL. So, and I feel very comfortable that he's going to be able to do it. Uh, I think he'd probably be even a little bit higher if it wasn't, you know, Western, Western Michigan. Michigan that I was looking sure. at from. So. And, this, and this kind of bounces off what I was saying before about Olave. Like, you're probably better off at this position taking Sky Moore over Olave for the upside of your dynasty fantasy football team, right? Yeah. Like, he offers that upside, at least from our opinions. You know, sure. you know again, this every any podcast you listen to, no matter what they say, it's all opinion-based, right? And of all drafts, when they draft their players, it's opinion-based. It's, you know, well, it's like what everybody they they, they gather their facts, they yeah. gather their data, they watch their film, but at the end of the day, it is still humans making the pick. And, and all you can really go off is like history, right? Like you know, we've been doing a Dynasty Nerds podcast for eight years. We have a lot of history of our analysis putting down on podcast, and you know, this isn't us. This isn't me trying to like, oh, I'm I'm a, I'm bragging. It's just we've been right a lot more than we've been wrong. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, David Zach did that. Uh, Draft over, what was it, draft over analysis of draft position? I mean, Jared Wackerly, our producer, outscored 
every, you know, for your favorite big guys, JJ, Zacharias, and all those guys, Jared pan out number one from mm-hmm. his tape view compared to overall draft value. Is that what it was? Like, Yeah, those are two separate things. It was my rankings on the rookies after the draft happened and everybody ranked the rookies. Yeah. Then he also did a separate analysis on our overall nerd score, which is Garrett and I combined and uh, our anybody else that contributes to the score. And um, he it had a better predictive um, – I forget what the actual analytic terminology is. Over draft capital. Though. Yeah, it predicted. It was more predictive of success. Yeah, than, more predictive of success than than actual draft capital. And that's something you easily go back and listen to all our old rookie breakdowns. We have eight years of them, and you can see where other people were telling you to go left, and we were telling you to go right, right. Mm-hmm. And it's just our, in our opinion. You know, so again, in my opinion, I think Sky Moore is probably the better upside pick here over a guy like Chris Olave. Even though like Chris Olave will have better draft pedigree, he's the consensus number one receiver over Sky Moore, probably over any NFL draft you can analyst you can look at. But again, for fantasy football upside, that's what we're looking at. And that's what, it, again, that's, that's why I always I go back off of that, definitely for new listeners, is that's how you look at it. Like, oh, you can't rank this player higher. Like, dude, for dynasty fantasy football, I absolutely can. Yeah. So moving on to our next player at number 11 here, might be a, might be a shock. One player, I, one person got us here, by the way. I, I, <laughs> I might have to give over my... Truther, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you do. You Hype definitely have train to. Oh, conductor sure. at this point because I thought I was incredibly high on this guy, but oh, no, I'm not high enough. No, somebody I came in second. Somebody Snoop Dogg dog over here. Uh, high. So at number 11, <laughs> we have Zamir White running back out of Georgia. I am at 14, Garrett had him 11, Jared at 12. Matt has him as his fifth overall player, fifth overall. Overall, I apologize, Matt. Not running back five, fifth overall. Fifth Fifth overall. overall. I have to apologize because I really thought I was the conductor of this train, and clearly, uh, it's you. I'll 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 cede the seat to you. I told you the whole time. You did tell me. I I was my fifth running back. Yeah, that's not bad. Listen, he is. He's one of the best pure running backs in this draft. I mean, just running between the tackles. Absolutely. And I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take that gamble in this particularly weak draft. And I'm going to bump him up. I'm going to give him that running back bump because I think he's one of these guys that can win a a job and be the workhorse type of back. I know he's not going to catch a lot of balls. I know that he's a lot of his production is going to have to come on volume and touchdowns. But Zamir White, and then he then he comes in and runs the four. Was it four four, four, four flat. flat? So beautiful. I mean, I mean beautiful. It just couldn't have set up better for me, and and you see it on tape. On tape, he's he can run away from guys in the open field. Yeah. So it, it's it's one of these things where I think he I think people are undervaluing him. I don't know why he's a he is a big back that can run between the tackles. He can run away from people. It's just the passing game chops that people are really really worried about. And I get it because he hasn't done it a lot, and I don't think he's going to do a lot at the next level. But I think he can be a workhorse back in the at the NFL level. Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry, ceiling. Yep, for sure. And I and I like Zamir White. I mean, we all like Zamir White. That being said, um, for our listeners, for our viewers, Matt, also let them know just because he's your fifth overall player. Yeah. That when you're in these, when you're doing your own rank set, and maybe you like match your favorite person on the show, like he's your favorite analyst. Like he, all the tips he's given you over the years, like he's easily his voice, his looks, his <laughs> takes have really swooned you to that side. You got Justin Jefferson because of him. Yeah, you got Justin Jefferson because of him. You got A.J. Brown because of him. You got hard nipples because of him. All that good stuff, right? Like, you're a happy person. You would also let these people know, please, because you have a player rank some at five. You also have to be very smart when you're drafting. If you love a guy. You don't don't always take him there. You move back, and you just, at this point, what at this point, say, okay, I'm going to take him at nine to be safe, right? Say he goes in a late second. Say he goes in the third round, he goes to a good spot. Like, okay. And this would be a great time to mock draft the heck out of this and see how late you can get him. On the Dice Nerds mock draft tool. Absolutely. In the app store today. Anywhere you can find it. Absolutely. Dice Nerds mock draft tool. And then you start today. Then you start you start knowing kind of where where you can (laughs) where you can get a guy. How late you can get a guy consistently is by doing some of that kind of stuff. It's an exercise. But um definitely it if you're running back needy, these other two guys have gone. That's as high as I feel comfortable taking him. How about that? Number five, I'd be fine with it. Okay. I mean, I I, I know that you guys, I love it. I mean, I'm embarrassed that I'm not to your level is you really should, what it is. You should be. 
Uh, I thought I was pretty bold saying like lot, he's a first round pick. Listen, there's a lot of question marks in this draft there in is. particular. When I see him, I don't have any question that he can operate as a three down back. I just don't. There's none. And um, other than the fact that he's, that he's not going to catch a bunch of passes. And I'm fine with that because I think he's going to be scoring touchdowns and I, I think he's going to get a lot of volume. I agree. You're preach. So, Amen. In, in a draft where I've got a lot of questions at a lot of other areas, I'm having to like force myself to like some of these wide I'm, receivers. I'm I do quietly not, moving them up. I do talking. not. I do not have to force myself to like Zamir Zamir White one bit. Listen, if if Traylon Burks busts and Zamir White's the next Nick Chubb, I'm just gonna let Matt do all the talking. <laughs> Because I, I I have the same takes, just not as bold I'm, as Matt. I was like, always going to have Burks yes. at like 10. I can't quite get to Matt's level there. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? We do our bold take show this year. Turd Ferguson. Hot there, takes hot, guy. He better, yeah, hot take show. He wasn't got, there last year. He's got to have it. at least one. These are all my hot takes. They're all gone. They're all, they're all <laughs> you, were, you were sick last time. That last year. True. Remember, right. you last remember, one you for the show. six months ago? <laughs> I had Zemir White running back five. He finishes his running back five. Ooh, that's a hot take, Matt. Right, the let's water go to 12 here. Let's get to 12. All right, let's get to 12 Last here. One. Where are we on time? So we're at an hour, so we're going to round out the top 12 pre-draft ranks. And then and we're we'll going to quickly through the rest in yeah, another show. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do that. 13 next. through, what, 30? Yep. At number 12, we have George Pickens, wide receiver, George I. at number 10. Matt, 7. Garrett, 14. Jared, 13. Uh, so, again, a very high upside player. Has all the skill set that you want on the number one wide receiver. Obviously, would be not just the injury. There's also personality off, issues, off field, off field issues. issues, and I and I read them too, and I still kept them where I was at. And that speaks, I think, volumes as to how I feel about the rest of this class. How about that? Sure. Um, you guys, uh, I think, feel a lot more comfortable with some of these prospects than I do. Obviously, I don't feel comfortable at all with George Pickens, his the person. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I feel like there, obviously there's enough smoke there that, poop in your shoe? that there's probably some fire to his personality issues, but if he gets the right coach that can speak to him and, you know, speak to his aura and get him straight, then he has got, you know, wide receiver. I already talked about it. Wide mm-hmm. receiver one upside for me. And that's how I kept him in the top seven for me. Yeah. I, I ended up being the low guy on, on Pickens. And I understand the arguments on his ceiling because I agree. I mean, I've, we've seen some of the catches that he's made. Uh, we've seen some of the plays that he's made. Uh, I'm just, I was very surprised that despite like his demeanor of like chucking defensive backs at the line and stuff like that, like his play strength wasn't nearly as good as like that would have indicated to me. Um, he, I don't, he did not get off the line well at all to me, which is a very big surprise. I, I figured a guy of his pedigree would have done a better job of getting off the line. He had one of the lower marks in the class for me in that area. So I understand the ceiling, but I don't think, and now especially that now that we have the all the off-the-field stuff to worry about too, I just think that there's a lot more bust potential here than there is boom potential. So if you want to take him at the end of the first round, cool. I don't think I can get him in my first round current. But if we back it up just to Zamir White, I think every player we're talking about going forward offers massive bust potential. For sure. But I'm just saying that's why I have him at 14 instead of 10 and 7. So here, here's here's one caveat, caveat to, I guess, my ranking of him. If he's one of these guys that goes – he plummets in the draft because because the character stuff is so much worse than we think, mm-hmm. and he ends up being like a fifth round draft pick. He's gonna go way down my sure, board because sure. then there's because then the team has no real investment in this player, and they could just cut bait if he's if as he's long as he goes second, even worst case third round. Would you keep him relatively close to this second? Be second second round. round or or he's going he's gonna slide down a bit. I saw okay. some, oh I, God I, I want to write it down and I didn't because I was out at the time. Somebody put a stat out on Twitter. Oh, I wish I remember who it was. And it, it was after pick 72 for wide receivers. So it was like like third round, essentially. Like mm-hmm. The odds of them like being a fancy football relevant wide receiver was like almost zero. Like it was crazy. It was a stat. I can't remember huh. the exact stat, but it was like it was after pick 72, which would be top of the third round, essentially. Yeah, it would be 3-8. Like, yeah. So the, and it was like something like the odds of them producing a fancy football level at a high level were like really, really slim. And he put like the eight players out there that broke that mold essentially. So yeah, for me, 
Yeah, for me, a guy like George Pickens, if he if he falls, and tells us a lot. I mean, yep. and it, it's, it's happened before. It happened like Laquan Treadwell. We mentioned sure. a guy we liked a lot, Kelvin Harmon. It happened to he slipped way down to Washington, and we still like the situation. Hakeem Butler, that we thought was arguably the wide receiver one, kept slipping and slipping and slipping. Like, what's going on here? Sometimes there's just things that you don't know that the NFL people know. That's where they and that was it. Marcus Marcus Mosher. Um, he said the odds of you finding a quality starting receiver past pick number 75 is around 5%. That's who, yeah, yeah, he does great work. Um, yeah, so 5%. So like, or Mosier, is it Mark Mosier? Mosier, 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 yeah. Yeah. So Mosier. to me, like, that's like a stat that will stick with me for the rest of my, like, those are like nuggets that I like to know. Like, same thing, like, odds of you being a running back one after you're running back one once, one time is what, Matt? What we did, like 17%? Somewhere around yeah. there? That's the number that'll stick with you forever, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> What is it, Matt? Well, these were all, we did a lot of numbers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was like oh, here's here's my favorite thing. I have a really good I have a really good friend, and this is like year two thousand. He comes up to us. He's like, "God, man, it was just the best day of my life. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a Wednesday. <laughs> or was, was it, it a Thursday?" Thursday? <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's it. That's our top twelve. We'll get in here. George Pickens um, rounds it out. Go over this one more time. Brees Hall. Garrett Wilson, Kenneth Walker, Jameson Williams, Drake London, Jahan Dotson, Isaiah Spiller, Traylon Burks, Chris Olave, Sky Moore, Zamir White, George Pickens. Works out our top 12 consensus top 12 rookies pre-NFL draft. Why is that important? Because this is a tape score uh, alone, essentially. This is our tape evaluation. Where this goes after this, we'll see. It's surely going to change because a lot of these tiers sure. are the same. But we'll know next week. When we come back next week, we will be breaking down the NFL draft. But it won't be next week. We will be recording that show on Sunday night. Sunday, Sunday. As we said, most people have their ranking or their rookie draft starting Monday morning. So we're going to make sure that our podcast is out when you wake up Monday morning, breaking down the NFL draft, breaking down some of these players, and telling you what we like and we don't like, which will carry over to the Nerd Herd episode as well. So... If you're not a Nerd Herd member and you want to get a complete breakdown of the NFL draft, now's the time to enjoy it for the price of a cup of coffee. Not only do you get the extra podcasts, and you also get the Dynasty Nerds tools with Dynasty GM, Ooh. which is the most best streamlining Dynasty tool you'll ever find. You get the access to the film room. You get the Nerd Score. And so much more for the price of a cup of coffee. Right now, if you use the promo code ROOKIE, we'll give you 15% off any subscription you want at DynastyNerds.com. Check it out. Use the promo code ROOKIE, and you'll get all that great information. And all I, all I really ask is just give it a try. Maybe it's not for you, because I get it. Some people are like, listen, I'm not spending money on Dynasty Fans Football. I'm not paying for subs. I'm not paying for tools. And I get that, because I had the same mentality about seven years ago as well. Um, and now I actually use these tools. It, it's amazing how much it elevates my Dynasty game by making everything so much easier on me. Um, and just putting things visually in front of me to help me make decisions, right? Like, and just saving me time. Like, where am I weak at? I'm weak at wide receiver. Who's strong at running back? Oh, here it is. Why? And, and more so, not even make trades. Just give you an honest evaluation of your team. Sometimes that's the hardest the, thing that's in Dynasty the to do yeah. is get an honest evaluation mm -hmm. of your team because you're looking at it from such a small perspective, right? You're not looking at overall league perspective. You're looking at your team and not where everybody else actually stands in that league. Right. So the B, we mentioned this before, if you take Chris Olave in the middle, if you're stuck in the middle of your league, it's literally the worst place to be in Dynasty Fantasy Football because you're going nowhere. You got to either blow it up or go for the ship. And if you're, it's so, we've been saying that for eight years because it's so easy to get stuck in the middle because when you're stuck in the middle is you have a couple of really good assets and that's it. But how do you find the ability to turn that around? And that's the hardest, I think it's the hardest thing to do in Dynasty because when you're blowing up, it's easy. You're getting, you have all these high draft picks. A lot yep. of these picks are easy. When you're a contender, it's easy because you're making these small trades for veterans. It's so hard to get unstuck from the middle because you have these good assets that you're so afraid to get rid of because then you have nothing, not realizing you need to go down to nothing to get to something. And the Dynasty Nerd GM will help you do just that. Use your promo code ROOKIE. Just try it out. Give it a month. You know, for a price of a cup of coffee, you get it for a month. That's a long time to sit there and like play around with the tool and everything on the site to see if it's for you. If you like it, stick around. If not, hey, at least you gave it a try. No Promo hard code feelings. Rookie. We'll be back in a couple days, about five days, talking NFL draft. You ready for those unicorns? Oh. Adios. <laughs>